I'm not going to get upset. Ed told me not to be slushy. He told me not to embarrass him. He wasn't quite sure what he wanted, whether he wanted slushy or embarrassing. So I thought it might be quite good to do a bit of both. Because one thing Ed's dad, I'll tell you a little story. Many years ago, Ed was due to go to a rowing competition. And he, um, he rang me. And I had a phone call and a phone message that said, where the hell are you? You should get here now. <laughs> And at the background, I heard his dad go, don't speak to her like that, son, she'll never come home. <laughs> at which I went, I went shopping, and I came back about an hour later. At which when we got to Nottingham, it was too late for him to go on the water. And he didn't win, and it was my fault. However, Ed... No, that's not entirely true. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say exactly what he said. The blaming things. Yeah. Ed, Ed was our love child. We were married. We were married for seven years before I actually caught Fred with. And when I had him, he took me two days to push him out. Two days, 27 stitches, and 15 days in hospital. I was going to make sure, out of all the children I had, that he was going to pay for that. It might take a while, but he is going to pay for that. It might be old people's home, it might be whatever, but he is going to pay. I've never been quite the same. I will say that Amy came out like a bar of soap. <laughs> She's the one that's sitting very pretty. I'm not going to say that. Okay. I'm going to tell you a few stories about Ed. And it's going to be a bit embarrassing, but he's just going to have to take it, okay? Now, his dad was really worried. When he was little... He used to dress up in dresses and he used to wear really, <laughs> he used to wear helmets. Whatever helmet he could find, he always had a hat on. And if you look around the room, there are hats. There's a Moroccan hat, Roy Orbison look. He always had his hat on back to front. He thought he was cool. He did some dance moves over there. He thought he was going to be a budding musician, budding musician. Story goes on. Anyway, Edward and I, Alan and I went on holiday to Bournemouth. <laughs> and we were walking along the seafront, and uh, to the right was this beautiful girl with a, with a bikini on. She was laying on the floor. You know how you get brown, you take your bikini off at the back. She was getting sunny, but then all of a sudden she sat up, and as she sat up, the bikini dropped. Edward headbutted a lamppost. <laughs> he was 12. Oh. <laughs> when we were in France, okay, this is, we were in France on holiday, and I took the wrong turn. I know it was a nudist speech, but I didn't know at the time. As I was walking down, Edward had a cricked neck looking as he was going down. Amy was like, for Christ's sake, Mum, will you turn away? I've never seen so many wrinkles. At which we had to come back all the way and Edward was there going, oh my God, rubbernecking at everything he could see. So we know he's going to be cool. Now, with my son, he needs love in his life. He needs a girlfriend. Got to be pretty because we want a girlfriend because we want pretty grandchildren. I, I know that's sad, but I do want pretty grandchildren. So as a special treat, I don't know whether you know, but you know, I've got a bit of a voice on me. And these beautiful people behind me. Yeah. <laughs> Play me a tune. I'm not trying to take this limelight, but I am. It might go very wrong because we've never done it before. But these are <laughs> neither of these guys, but they're really professional. Should we go for it? You just take over if 